I'm Maria Idrissi. I'm a model and a public speaker. One of the inspirational figures from the fashion world is Maria Idrissi. She was the world's first hijab-wearing model. Maria also succeeded to become a star in the H&M Sustainable Fashion post the look campaign in 2015. She has also been successfully published in various world-renowned magazines such as Teen Vogue, Elle, and Marie Claire. And recently, she has attracted to more attention by becoming the face of the Fenty Beauty campaign. The fashion world, which is increasingly in demand from year to year, would often provide wider opportunities for models. Now, as time goes by, Muslim models and the hijab are now starting to penetrate in the fashion world. One such inspirational figure is Maria Idrisi. That's right, and lucky for us, we are now connected to the first world hijab-wearing model, who is also the first model of her kind for H&M. However, her achievement goes beyond that. So. Good morning, the UK time, Maria. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi, and good afternoon to you guys. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very good. Thank you, Halima, for join. Uh, thank you, Maria, for joining us. I was a bit of mix between Halima and also Maria because Halima is also a supermodel wearing hijab as That's well. Right. So we know that you're, <laughs> we know that you're a model and also the first Muslim hijab wearing model for H and M. Can you tell us since when do you start your modeling career? Um, it was 2015 when I literally got scouted in a shopping center. Mm. So I wasn't actually aspiring to be a model before then. Um, I was I was working in a shop and a lady came in and said, can I take a photo of you for uh, her roster? And I said, yeah, okay, why not? I actually <laughs> thought when she said casting director, it meant for film, mm -hmm. but it was for fashion. <laughs> right. Um, and that's how it started. Yeah, it kicked off all from that one campaign. So. Mm. Incredible. All right, so can you tell us um, how did H&M choose you to be a part of its campaign? Uh, I know you said casting, but was it for this H&M? And can you tell us the story behind it a little bit? Yeah, so um, it, it literally was me being casted in a, in a shopping mall, which is quite traditionally, I think, the way a lot of models have been mm. scouted before. So it's not... It's not, I guess, the most unique story in terms of how models are found, but because I was wearing a hijab, that was what the, the difference was um, in the industry, in the mainstream world. Obviously, in, in Muslim countries, it's, it's more common, you know, you can see women um, wearing hijab because mm. that's the, the, the fashion. But in, in the West, it was the first time they'd ever used a woman in a hijab for a fashion campaign. And it just happened to be H&M, which is the second largest retailer in the world. Yeah. And um, mm. from that one campaign, I just went to the shoot. I thought nothing of it when I got home. And then when it came out, my mom was like, you, have you seen your name on Google? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you've become the first Italian one. I was like, really? So I started Googling myself. I had to do my own research on, on, on what just happened. And then it just became like a domino effect. Obviously, we already had a huge um, modest fashion scene online mm -hmm. um, with a lot of women doing amazing things trying to push modest fashion to yep. the mainstream a lot of designers influencers but it just I guess wasn't as recognized or there hadn't been a light sh shone on on all these incredible people so yeah that's that's essentially the story how it all kicked <laughs> off and literally overnight changed everything <laughs> I love the story though and you know what you bring forth and uh, going through this now, how do you combine your modeling with your hijab or your Muslim identity? Because I know that that, is, that must be a story in itself. What did you think about becoming, you know, making history with shining more light on modest fashion? Yeah, in the, in, initially, because um, brands hadn't really obviously tapped into mm -hmm. using Muslim women in hijab um, for, for their campaigns and ads and stuff. So... I, I was doing a lot of talks and I felt I feel like I was more of a voice for modest fashion mm. than even a face because um, a lot of my work was doing consultations, panels, um, I did a TEDx talk as well, um, obviously I spoke at Oxford Uni, Cambridge and um, then I started to feel like I've, this is more of a political thing mm. rather than mm. like just being fashion and that's 
that's not what I anticipated. I thought, yeah, I'm just going to be a model now, you know, next up Gucci. <laughs> I'll be doing a runway for this brand. Fingers <laughs> so crossed. So it's quite interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite interesting to find myself in, in a more um, deeper side of fashion rather than just yep. the surface level of, 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 you know, doing beauty campaigns and stuff. But then the more it became normalized through those conversations I was having and, and through shining a light on um, the importance of having representation of Muslim women as well, yeah. I think that's when brands started to, you know, work a lot more with, with they start, you know, you start to notice how big this industry really is mm. beyond me because, you know, of course it existed way before, before I did anything with, with my hijab, so. Right. Yeah. So, Maria, talking about brands, now brands are becoming more open and more embracing. We're not talking only about H&M, but also Dolce & Gabbana, even Fenty. A collaboration between Louis Vuitton with Rihanna, right? They use um, models wearing hijab. But as a model, do you ever suffer discrimination against against you because of what you're wearing yeah i mean i wouldn't say it's so overt especially being in the uk where it's so diverse and, mm -hmm. and people are quite familiar with with muslims and different cultures and religions but there is definitely um some underlying tones of ignorance where you know a brand will be really nice about saying yeah we've done the whole hijab thing last season so we're not going to do it again this year and it's like wow you know we don't just take our hijab off you know for seasons you know? so that's that's when you start to notice well it, it's still quite um mm. a a tokenistic mm. idea rather than understanding that uh women wear the hijab all year round not just for ramadan um yeah. mm -hmm. not just for fashion obviously it's, yeah. it's 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 a lot deeper than that it's it's an essential part of of our of our lives okay. and um and it should be catered for if you're especially when you're in a country where there are so many so many muslims and and why not from a business perspective as well i mean there is a lot of money in it i'm mm -hmm. sure you've got all the stats and everything maria, <laughs> to before, show that so, sorry before yeah. you continue maria how did you react to that kind of backlash or to that kind of um discrimination against you do you know what initially i think i didn't even notice it because things were so busy mm -hmm. i had i just was tunnel vision i had no idea what was being said about me and then i think when things start to calm down you read stuff and you're like wow people really thought it was that bad i mean i'm talking both muslims and non-muslims alike where you had muslims feeling like this is not a step in the direction they want to go because there's always that worry that you know the West is going to try to, you know, take away the essence of the hijab. And, mm. and, and yep. we've seen enough in, in the media how Muslims are, you know, not always portrayed in the best way. So I understand, you know, those those fears and concerns. And then on the non-Muslim side, it was it was just like, ah, oh, you know, it went straight to politics, straight to ISIS, straight to <laughs> something that was so extreme, far left from yeah. what it was really about. And um, so for me, it was a bit like I felt a bit torn because I thought, well, you know, fr from the Muslim perspective, am I doing the right thing? I actually had to question myself a few times. And that's where I, I made sure that the work I do outside of fashion complemented it so that mm. it wasn't just this really superficial. I'm just a model um, because there is that irony, you know, wear hijab to to not draw so much attention to yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you're just plastered on a billboard. <laughs> so obviously you have to be able to. To, to balance that and, 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 and not feel like a hypocrite. That's, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Now, um, I know you mentioned it in your speech during the uh, TED um, event about changing the face of fashion. Now, could you tell us what you meant with that speech? So that speech was essentially changing. I, for me, it was changing the image around um, how Muslim women are perceived that wear, mm. that are overt, overtly Muslim, that wear hijab. Because um, especially, you know, with everything happening in France around the hijab bands, um, living, well, we were part of Europe at that time. Mm -hmm. so, so it felt very, 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 very close to home. And it was quite worrying that, uh, I mean, could, the, could these ideas come to, to our country, the country that I live in? Um, could people, do people perceive the hijab in the same way that so many other people, you know, look at it because of the media or because of whatever else so i just wanted to be able to um for people that are not familiar with muslim women in hijab 
just be myself essentially i know it sounds really cheesy but that's literally what it is mm -hmm. it's, it's not about being anything other than myself so they can see this is a choice this is not something my dad or my mum forced me to wear yep. I, I have quite the opposite story actually mm -hmm. i have family members questioning why i was wearing it you know <laughs> when i was a teenager so just changing all those stereotypes and narratives and and essentially again most importantly it was for me to just be able to um to do what I want to do and not feel like I have to compromise. And, you know, through sometimes doing something that could be selfish, you're actually doing something that, that could benefit others as well. And I guess the selfish thing was, I just want to pursue the things I want to pursue in life and not have mm -hmm. to take my hijab off. Mm. So, yeah. I think that's a great statement that you just made. And, uh, you know, how do you see the current development of the Muslim fashion or modest fashion, especially where you are right now? And I was looking at some of the pictures before and looking at you now, how stylish you are. You're breaking barriers already that people think that, you know, wearing the hijab is just the one thing. So what do you what do you see? Uh, how do you see the you know modest fashion world developing right now? I think it's embracing um, different cultures. So it's like another layer of diversity. So it's one thing for the mainstream fashion industry to, to have diversity by using people, um, you know, of different faiths. So like mm -hmm. a Muslim woman wearing a hijab, etc. But also within that to use Muslim women from different racial backgrounds and then different cultural styles of hijab as well. And that's something also I think quite uh, important to tackle because you know, there isn't this, we, 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 I mean, okay, this might get a bit too theological now <laughs> <laughs> into what actually, you know, that hijab is because of course we understand, like there is a general understanding yes. of the correct way to wear the hijab. And then there's ways that we style it um, based on culture, environment and, and other, other things. And I think it's just always focusing on the essence of it, which, which is around more than just modesty, it's it's an expression of our identity and not feeling like we're suppressed because of that. And if women start off wearing the hijab like me and then eventually, you know, mm -hmm. um, wrap it over the hairs more, but it, it's just, it's about being able to make women feel comfortable. And, mm. um, and also it's not about even being accepted, just again, being themselves, just not having to, to feel like they have to make those compromises to just live a normal mm. life. Mm. Yeah. Maria, we're nearly running out of time, but we can't let you go without this. So in addition to modeling, you are also mm -hmm. a poet. So could you recite a little bit of your poems for oh us today? <laughs> that would be please. fun and beautiful. Yes. I, would, I would love to, but this was, that, was, that was many, many years ago. I don't think I remember anything I've written. <laughs> over real on my instagram if you look down and i can do like different sure send us some so. dms <laughs> containing the link of yeah. it right yes yes please <laughs> you know right. you know i just wanted to say one thing i love that the way you express yourself with your fashion is that meaning i don't have to let go of my sneakers and my earrings <laughs> just no, yet and yeah. you know whatever we're comfortable with and you're right we muslim women um tend to feel pressured sometimes yeah, right yeah. Thank you so much. That was Maria Idrisi. Thank we you. can't wait for your next achievement and we hope for the best and all the success. More and more fashion weeks to come and more and more talks and we're definitely staying tuned. Thank you so much.